Hello everybody, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Hello everybody, how do you do? God loves you today. My name is Miss Catherine, and I'm coming to you from my office at home near Chicago, Illinois. And I am a deaconess in the United Methodist Church, and I serve with a child welfare agency, an agency that is building better lives for children for over 125 years. Yeah. And we help um, children learn, learn to read. Um, well, readers are leaders, you know, and we help children in foster care. We help youth who are living in temporary homes. We have housing for young adults, and we do all kinds of things that help to build better lives for children, just like stuck at home, no touch Bible camp. Thanks to Pastor Krista Paradiso. I am excited to be here on this Wednesday afternoon, March 25th in the year 2020, because I'm working from home. And so I have set up my little office and my studio. I'm practicing with some media and I want to share a story with you, um, scripture from the New Testament and a story called Baby Baobab, which is a tale from Africa that teaches about kindness and love and a craft, a baby Baobab tree, a song, and my friends that I met in a Dakar, a Senegal, several years ago, who I got to know by teaching them English and worshiping with them and learning all about their culture and their food. And so I have um, a song to start us off today called Welcome to the Circle. And I taught it to the children in Senegal. I taught it to Michel a little boy, and Marie, his sister, and their friend, Aja. And so I videotaped them four years ago. Michelle is playing the jambe, which is an African drum. And this is an echo song. Do you know what an echo song is? When we, when the leader sings a line, you echo it back. And so welcome to the circle is an echo song. And you'll hear me leading these children and them singing it back in English so they could practice English. Once in a while, friends, I am going to wear my reader glasses and then everything reflects off of them. But otherwise, I'll try to keep them on so we don't have that reflection. So I'm going to turn my laptop. I have one here and another one over here because I have my work laptop with me because I'm working from home. And this is the way I figured out how to do this so that you can see my friends. Here they are. And let's see if I bring it over here like this. I think I want to lift them up just a little bit more. Let's get another book. And we'll go laptop to laptop ocean to ocean because um, I want to I want to make sure you know where Senegal is as well okay across the Atlantic Ocean if you get your globe or a map but let's sing welcome to the circle first and our music leaders Aja Michel I want to I want you to get the best view possible okay Let's see what happens. We'll click it to go. A wana, a chua, a you know what to do. -a. Welcome to the circle. Uh -oh. We're very glad you're here. Join the celebration. They should be playing, so hold on. There they are. Deep inside is where love starts. Your turn. Inside. Can you hear it? Come now, spirit, fill our hearts. Your turn. Welcome to the circle. Welcome to the circle. 
We're very glad you're here. Very glad you're here. Can you wave hi? Okay. Now I'm gonna come up a little closer. Can you tell us your name? Your name. My name is Aja. Hello, Aja. And who are you? Hi, my name is Marie. Hi, Marie. Thank you. And who are you? My name is Michelle. How old are you, Michelle? I am seven years old. Awesome. Marie, how old are you? Awesome. Aja, how old are you? Three years old. Four. Awesome. Okay, can you wave <clears throat> goodbye? Look. Okay, goodbye. wave goodbye. Goodbye. Love you. Love you. There you go. Oh, they're so sweet. So sweet. Okay. So those are my friends. Michelle, the little boy on the jambe. Marie, his sister in the middle. And Aja who's four. Well, now it's already been four years, so let's do some math. Michelle, who was seven at the time, would be 11. And Marie, in the middle, his little sister, who was five, plus four, nine. And Aja, who thought she was three, but she was really four, plus four. Well, she would be eight years old. I wonder how old you are. You're watching in today. I wonder how old you are. I wonder where you're sitting. I wonder where you're living. I wonder what church you might go to. I wonder what community center you visit. And I wonder what you're doing with all your time while you're home, sheltering at home in place to stay safe. So I hope our time together today is just a treasure for you. I hope it's fun. And I hope it's meaningful as we go on this trip. Now, I want to show you where we're going. So I've got to go back into, into uh, my other computer where I have worked on uh, sending some photos over to it from my, Af my trip to Africa and saving it in a special file called No Touch Bible Camp. And so I have to get the right mouse. And come on, come on, Miss Catherine, Miss Catherine, L M N. Huh, it's not there. All right, wait, wait. I'm gonna go up to my documents. It must be in there because I know I had it. Oh, there. N comes after M. What was I thinking? I thought N was before M. All right, here we go. So these are some photos. I want to show you this one. I'm going to turn turn back over here. Uh, this is fun because I took this photo on the plane. The, the little screen in front of me shows you where you're traveling to. And so I took a little, little picture right here of Dakar. So that's the continent of Africa off of the coast of... Um, of uh, the Atlantic Ocean. That's the Atlantic Ocean. Can you see the Atlantic? Let me bring it closer. See that? Isn't it beautiful? Oh my gosh, the Atlantic Ocean. So going on a mission trip, we're going to use our religious imagination. We're going to go together by staying right at home. And if you take an arm, one or the other, it doesn't matter. And put it on your hip, you know, and touch your elbow here. Or if you're using your other arm, touch your elbow, elbow over here. Oh, it feels good feels really good. That little elbow sticking out into the Atlantic Ocean is where Senegal is. And we went to the city of Dakar. Dakar, Senegal. That's in West Africa. And that's where you find the baby baobab tree. And so I want to read you the story of baby baobab. And I want to make a connection with you to this scripture because my friend Ruth is 102 years old. I said 102 years old. Yes, she was born in 1918, 100, 102 years ago. I just talked to her today because I wanted to tell her I was doing this, that I was going to use her favorite scripture. Her favorite scripture comes from 1 Corinthians. Boy, that's a mouthful. That's 
Um, in the New Testament, when Jesus was living, doing his ministry, when he died on the cross for us, and then he rose again, the resurrection, and was still teaching the disciples to go out and tell the good news of, of God's salvation. So the scripture from 1 Corinthians says this, do you not know you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? She learned that scripture when she was a little girl and she shared with me that it always meant so much to her. And so in honor of Ruth, 102 years old, and in, and in um, honor of our sheltering at home and learning about our families and the world, learning online, watching, being part of Stuck at Home, No Touch Bible Camp. Think of those words. Echo them back to me, just like our song. Do you not know? Your turn. Do you not know? You are God's temple. Your turn. You are God's temple. And that God's spirit, your turn, and that God's spirit dwells within you. Your turn dwells within you from 1 Corinthians. The Apostle Paul was speaking to the people of Corinth. Well, that's over, that's over the Atlantic Ocean too, and a little bit farther inland. He was teaching the people of Corinth because they were getting a little boasty. They were getting a little arrogant. They were getting a little bit like, hey, I'm all that. He wanted to remind the people that God's spirit dwells within them. It's their temple within them. This book, Baby Baobab, is from Africa, and it is about boasting. Uh, what does boasting mean? What is boasting, boast? Hmm. Most, toast, coast, like the coast of Africa. Oh, that's rhyming. What does boast mean? Well, it means to be a little too big-headed, a little too I'm so important and you're not, right? But that's not what our scripture tells us today. It tells us to remember that we're God's temple and God's temple dwells within us. So creating a clean heart, creating a beautiful mind and a most magnificent spirit. So let's read the story. I'm going to show you the pictures because I want you to be able to see Baby Bob Bob. Okay, so here's the story. Here's the first picture of Baby Bob Bob. I'm going to take my sticky note off. And Baby Bob Bob's standing there and he's just thinking that he's so cool. He's the coolest one around, right? And he's not so happy with the sun. Do you see the sun down here? Yep, the sun is coming up. He knows it's going to be a hot day. That's Baby Bow Bob. Baby Bow Bob likes to say a lot, look at me, look at me. You ever say that? Look at me. I, I think I do that sometimes, right? Look at me. I wonder if I turn this way, if that's a little better. Might be. Okay. Some look down at Baby Bow Bob and <clears throat> his golden rays trembled. Baby Bow Bob, he called. Be careful not to boast. There are others as beautiful as you. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's what the son was saying to Baby Bow Bob, a reminder that others are as beautiful as Baby Bow Bob. Nonsense, shouted Baby Bow Bob. I'm as clever as can be. I'm the tallest, greenest tree. He waved a branch at a small African honeybee that buzzed around his trunk. Buzz off, bee. I'm not, I'm far too big to be bothered by you. See the bee? Well, the bee said, hmm, can you do that? Hmm, baby Bob Bob is being very rude. I will ask my friends to help me teach him some manners. Ooh, that little bee. What's it gonna be? Okay, let's see, baby Bob Bob felt hot and bothered. At last, sun began to set. Do you see the sun setting over here? Good night, baby Bob Bob, he whispered. Oh, phew, sighed the little tree. Cool at last. He began to sing his favorite song. 
uh-oh. Look at me, look at me. I'm the tallest, greenest tree. I'm as handsome as can be. That sounds to me like he's boasting, don't you think? Oh, wow, look at this bird. This is a hornbill. Ow, cried Baby Bow Bob suddenly. Who is hurting me? Oh, hello, said Hornbill. I'm sharpening my beak on your strong branches. Go away, you woke me up, and I want to sleep, grumbled Baby Bow Bob. Can you grumble? Grumble, 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 grumble. Go away. <clears throat> Ooh, now it's really dark outside. See the stars? And the moon is starting to come into the picture. Stop squeaking in my ear, moaned the tree as Mr. and Mrs. Bat began to shriek each other in their high voices. <coughs> Go away. You're disturbing my sleep, he complained. Boy, this is not going well, is it? Oh, look at Here's baby Bow Bow. See how the art is kind of made out of ripped paper? You can see his face. He doesn't look very happy. Hmm. Good evening, said Caterpillar. You feel so smooth to crawl on. Ooh, that tickles. Go away. I'm trying to sleep. Wind, baby Bob. Bob. Oh boy. Now baby Bob, Bob is whining. Let's not whine. Let's not whine today. All right, let's see what happens. I'm so tired groaned a little tree. Hey, who's shaking my branches? Uh, who do you think it is? Look at that art. I just love that. Look at that. It almost looks like a little child dressed in a monkey suit. I am, shouted monkey. I'm swinging and jumping. Go away. I need to sleep, yelled baby Bow Bob. Oh, this is not going so well, is it? All right. All night. All night long, Baby Bob Bob was kept awake by Bee's friends. Oh, that little bee, she was sneaky. When sun came up and next morning, the little tree was tired and cross. Well, that means the little tree was crabby. You must learn to be kind to others and to share your branches, sun told the tired little tree. See the sun coming up? And the tired little tree. Never bellowed baby Bob Bob. They cannot live in my branches ever again. Wow, that's a really strong comment. That would make me, I would feel sad about that, don't, wouldn't you? Hmm. Let's see, look at that beautiful picture of the sun. Oh, gosh, the sun doesn't look happy at all, does it? Oh my goodness. Be careful, little tree, said sun in a very angry voice. You must learn to obey. I'm not listening to you, son, said cheeky baby Bow Bob. And he tossed his leafy branches around. Do you ever do that? Like toss your head? Huh, I'm not doing, I'm not doing that. Oh, we forget about God's temple that's dwelling within us. <clears throat> Suddenly, oh my goodness, look at this. The earth started moving. Little baby Baba didn't know what was happening. His roots were being pulled out of the ground. Oh my goodness, what's happening to me? Look at that. What do you think is happening? His roots are being pulled out of the ground. You have been rude and selfish, said Sun to the Baobab tree. From now on, you will have your roots in the air. Your beautiful branches will be buried under the ground. Baby Bob Bob is up side down. Do you see it? Oh no, said the little tree sadly. I'm sorry I was so rude. Please let me, please let me have my leaves back. Hmm, now baby Bob Bob. Now he's realizing how he was boasting and that was not a good thing. You have said that you are sorry replied the sun, so I will give you a sm small green leaves for only three months at, of the year, and this will remind you to be kind. So gosh, let's see, there's 12 months in a year. 
So baby Bao Bao will only have three months, three months, like March, April, May. Yeah. Or June, July, August, three months. Oh, thank you, son, said the grateful baby Bao Bob. The other creatures can live in my branches whenever they like, he added happily. And he's got an upside down smile. Do you see it? And last but not least, from that day on, Baby Bao Bob has remained upside down. Now he is kind and helpful. And once a year, this beautiful flower blooms for one day, only one day once a year. And it also gives fruit to this pod, which is called monkey bread. And the seeds and the milk and the meat of the pod can be eaten by the people and by animals. Isn't that something? So everybody is blessed by the baobab tree. Now, that's the end of the story. And remember, do you, can you say the scripture with me? Do you not know you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you, within you? So the baobab tree, let's see, I have one on this, I have one on this screen. I don't think I showed it to you. There it is. There it is. Let's see, I'm going to bring this around and just show it to you. Can you see it? Can you see it? There it is. That's a picture I took of a baobab tree. I think some of the branches had been cut from that at the top, but we're going to make a baobab tree. All you need is a little toilet paper tube. I bet you have some of those. Do you have pa toilet paper tubes? <laughs> okay. If not, you can use paper and make a little roll. But I just <clears throat> took this and, well, let's see. Oh, here, a toilet paper tube. And you can use scissors. Okay. And I just made some cuts kind of social distancing apart right they're not right next to each other they're a little bit far apart so that you can bend them down to make the branches you could even rip it a little bit too see so that's the inside this is the outside and this is the one i made i had green um like um sticky note paper so I cut my leaves out of that and I stuck them on and I used a little tape and then I drew a face, right? Like baby Bob Bob. I drew a happy face because I know that baby Bob Bob realized that, that uh, God's temple was, is within him, within you, where God's spirit dwells. Okay, so that's that one. You can add the leaves if you have to. If you don't have green paper, you can just have white paper. I know you might be going to find some of that right now, and that's okay. You can replay this and see what I did. But if you just have white paper and color it green, you can make really any shape of leaves, friends. It can really be anything. I make like a little teardrop, and then... You can tape it or glue it or um, maybe have a stapler, but you might need help with that. You know, you can put a little tape on there and then you can tape it on. And then with your marker, you can, we're going to make a happy face, right? A couple eyes. And... A mouth. Now the other thing that's fun about these is if you get a um, uh, paper towel tube, you can make the tall baobab trees and you can make a whole little uh, village or forest of baobab trees, but they, they normally grow far apart, kind of like we're learning about um, staying safe <clears throat> and social distancing. Well, those baobab trees need room to spread their roots and spread their branches. Um, so that's the little baobab tree. Welcome to the circus.
sparkle. What else did I want to share with you? Oh, I know. I dropped it on the floor, but when I was in Africa, I bought a tapestry that was handmade of a baobab tree. Look at this. I'm so excited to share this with you. Can you see it? It's in green. See how it's patched, sewn together, and their symbols. Isn't it beautiful? So there's the roots on the bottom. And when it blooms, those flowers, friends, it's really, really, really pretty. Isn't that nice? So that's, <clears throat> that's the baobab tree on a tapestry. Okay, well, we're getting close to the end of our time. I think what else I want to show you real quick um, are the pictures that my friends Marie and Aja and Michelle drew. I, I laminated them when we came home, but they drew the baobab tree on paper with crayons, and this one has the fruit on it. That was Marie. And look at what Aja, Aja did. A baobab tree. I love trees. Trees are universal. Universal. <clears throat> this is another one by Marie. And this one, Michelle. See that? He even put, like he even had some little animals living in there. And I didn't have that book at the time, so I didn't read that book to them. I, I just have that book for you. And this is another one that Michelle made. So you could draw pictures of the baobab trees. You could draw the bats. Um, what else was in there? The hornbill, the monkey, the caterpillar, the bee. You could make your own story. You could go on um, the internet with um, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever you live with, with their help, an older sibling, and look up baobab trees to see there are baobab, these kind of baobab trees in West Africa, but there's a different kind of baobab tree in East Africa, like Tanzania or Tanzania. Those are a different kind of baobab tree. <clears throat> so most importantly, what I want you to just think about and wonder about is how you have the temple, God's temple within you, with God's spirit dwelling within you like our, our scripture from 1 Corinthians. Oh, I just love that. I just, dwelling within me is such a, a beautiful, calming, um, powerful um, prayer. Really, it's a prayer that God's temple dwells within us. So friends, on this day, March 25th, uh, coming to you from Chicago, I hope that you've enjoyed our trip to Senegal, right? out in the Atlantic Ocean, that you'll think about our scripture from 1 Corinthians. It's actually from chapter 3, and it's verse 16. Okay, chapter 3, verse 16. Um, our song, Welcome to the Circle. Um, our trees that we made to remind us to not be boastful, but to be loving and kind. And to remember that God is love. God is love. God is love. God is love. Love. So love you. Be well. I hope you've had a good time with me today. I had a wonderful time with you. And I'll be praying for you. And I welcome you to pray for me and my daughters who live in New York and Paris. And I hope to film another uh, story. I'm not quite sure what. I have lots of different ideas, but maybe I'll be able to put another um, story up on YouTube. All right. So God bless you. Uh, God keep you. And thank you. Thank you so much for your faith. It's a beautiful thing. Amen. Bye-bye.